So now, how do we do all of this virtually? That's a gr great question. So virtually, now it's all the same actually, uh, whether you're gonna be doing it virtually or in person. It's the, 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 the patterns of what we do, it's largely the same, except for the one big difference is that we're not going out, we are not going out to the, the property, okay? So does that mean nobody goes out to the property? Not necessarily. It can happen like that, but that's not always the best way to go about this, okay? What it means to wholesale a property virtually is just that we don't, we don't leave, like we're, I'm stay in my place and I can be like here, I'm in San Diego, but can I do wholesales in, um, you know, Little Rock, Arkansas? Sure, that's what we're talking about. Can I do them in Seattle? Could I do them in um, Denver? Where, wherever it is, yes, that's, we can do that, okay? And, and again, that's what we're talking about, just having, uh, doing the wholesaling from just your spot right here and then in any market, available okay um this this opens up the whole map to everybody which is really really cool and it also allows you to uh, kind of pick your price point you know hey do you want to work in a market that's um you know the higher end markets or do you want to go into a market that's more uh entry level or lower price point hey they they all have their pros and cons but uh when you take this a uh, virtual approach you you do you get to have the whole map to yourself and get to check it out so that's uh that's really really important now as you go through building your um your virtual team and you pick your market which market do you want to get into now uh, there's a couple different ways that i pick my markets specifically uh, but it usually has to do with building your team okay why why do i say which markets and building my team why are those correlated okay well for me this has always been my approach to the virtual game is that if you're not going to be the eyes and ears out in the field you have to have somebody generally speaking out in the field that can double check anything that's that's um confer or that you've handled over the phone so building your team and communicating with your team becomes critical right so i like to focus as a baby step you know if you're just making this decision well eric which which market should I go to? I live here, but you know, what, what other market? Okay. This is, this is the question that I'm kind of leading you down here. I would say for me, what market do you have the most knowledge of right away? Which market do you have? Um, it, it's a huge advantage. If you know people in that market already, if you already have a small network or if you're building a network in that uh, market already that's a big advantage and uh, so I would kind of lean on that what because it's all about how much do you know about that market now we can always do our research and go from zero to knowledgeable fairly quick uh, but it is it's an advantage if you already know you know that place especially if you have already got a team or if you have a, a leg up on a team if you already know a person or two in that market that could help facilitate you um, doing transactions whether it's a real estate agent or a home inspector or somebody like this this goes a long ways okay so um, that just keep that in mind as we go through this so building your team the the first thing in, when you're vo virtual wholesaling the team member that you really want to focus on right away is your buyers okay your buyers are that's your lifeline you know once you get a property on a contract you got to sell it. So you got to have buyers. And so the step one that I always recommend for everybody is get to know your buyers ASAP. Okay. So the next question is, where do I find my buyers? Where do I get them? Okay. If you don't know the market and you don't have a network there, how do you find buyers? Okay. It's not as hard as you might think. Just keep in mind in every market, there's always buyers always there's real estate investors all over the place and so as long as the numbers make sense and that it's a deal it really is a deal generally speaking there's going to be a buyer for it okay so it's just a matter of getting the, the numbers correct in my opinion and then um packaging that those numbers and that analysis up and getting it to the right people right um if the numbers make sense there will be a buyer okay so just that's that's at the end of the day that's kind of like 
the thing that I sit on the most or I, I know uh, in my heart of heart is that as long as I get my numbers right, there's going to be somebody else out there that's going to want to make money on it. So uh, just keep that in mind. So the buyers, where do I start with my buyers? Um, I would recommend, this is a, an old trick that I learned right out of the gate and it stuck with me forever, is um, where do the most, where do the, the riskiest buyers hang out? You're like, well, where do they? I don't know. Foreclosure auctions. Okay, so just know that generally speaking, in every single market across the United States, especially you know if it's not a teeny tiny market, but all major markets across the country uh, have foreclosure sales, sheriff sales, and it's just a natural process. So whether it's a high volume of sales or, or a lower volume of sales, that, that can depend upon the market and whatever else. But are there foreclosures happening in every city? Yeah, there are. Okay. And are there buyers that go to the auction every single week? Yes, there are. Even in your market, even in your competitive market, there are always buyers out there at the courthouse steps bidding on um, their cash offer on foreclosed properties or properties that are in that foreclosure process. So, and I call these the riskiest buyers because just know the foreclosure game, it's a strong game, but it's full of pitfalls and risks. And so the people that are playing that game and they're buying it at auction at the courthouse step, that means that they oftentimes don't have access to the properties. So they're buying properties sight unseen or uh, very little like physical analysis. They're going they they do their research and then they go up and, and they bid cash. Okay. And once they, they, and they stand against other people and compete to, to, uh, pay cash. So, uh, I've been around that environment enough times, uh, for the first several years of my life, um, where I really got to know the game and there are players that, that, that utilize this on a regular basis, get to know them. So the point that I'm trying to make here is the foreclosure auctions are a wonderful networking event for you as a wholesaler. See that as a networking event for you as a wholesaler. You want to go to a foreclosure auction, understand who is buying, what are they buying, and why are they buying? Okay, are they landlord buyers? Are they flip buyers? Are they, you know, what what is what's the purpose of, of them there? So that's that's just networking. Okay, so that's good networking. And um, you might you might uh, have a real estate agent do this for you. Okay, hey, go to the foreclosure auctions, understand who's buying, get their business cards, and then I will reach out to them and build more rapport and let them know that I would love to add them to my buyers list and I have uh, opportunities coming down the pike that they can actually walk instead of buying sight unseen. Okay, so uh, that is a huge, huge um, head start. When you're building your buyers list, get out there, network, go find those the riskiest buyers at the foreclosure auctions. They buy cash, they're out there all the time, and that's the starting point. Then beyond that, keep networking. Okay, online, Facebook groups, all of that stuff is where you wanna be um, just saying, hey, I got deals coming up. I have a deal that's in the pipeline or I'm just investing into my marketing, deals are coming up. Who wants to get the first, uh, be on my hot list? You do that enough times in that local networking scene the, online, right? You can find groups online. Facebook is a wonderful area for uh, Facebook groups and local investors in, in any one market. So highly, highly recommend jumping onto Facebook um, to do your networking and re utilize real estate agents. So the other, obviously, real estate agents, the approach there you can um, be pretty strategic with your real estate agents. You can go find the real estate agents that have a history of working with investment type properties. Okay, so just find the agents that are work with investors. And that's just a simple interview question that you can go through. Now, if you wanna be more targeted, you could go th comb through the that local MLS and find uh, all the fixer properties that have sold in the last six months and see who listed them. Hmm. Okay, you can do that. Or you can have a real estate agent do that. Find all of the fixer li listings in the last six months in your market area, and then uh, find those people who listed them, and then start reaching out to those people as your, your list. Because uh, they, 
They, if they're listing um, properties that need work, they're oftentimes working with investors or they know the game pretty well. That's a great way to find really good real estate agents in any market. The other people, the other person is a home inspector. So a home inspector, why is that on my list? A home inspector is somebody that can um, be your eyes and ears, your physical eyes and ears. The, the home inspector, what they will do, um, if you, if you, um, you want to, once you get a property under contract, you're going to have an inspection uh, timeline. Okay. And that's where you get to verify and pull reports and make sure that, that what you're buying is what you thought you were going to be buying. This is where you can send a home inspector out to that property and, um, and really, uh, um, get, get the details of exactly what's going on with that property. They can, uh, tell you, you know, all of the, all of the warts of the property. Now the key and where I've really found an inside line here. So take notes. This is a really good one. Um, <clears throat> What I have done is I've networked with home um, home inspectors, and I am I I um, I uh, negotiated a half rate abbreviated report for my inspections. Okay, so the reason why is because I want the the my home inspector. I, a I don't want to pay four hundred dollars for a home inspection, and I don't want a thirty page report. What I want is an abbreviated five page report with the pictures and all of the major mechanical systems of the house looked at so that I know if I need to go get a um, go get a uh, specialist to go look at it, whether it's a roof foundation or something else like this. But a general a home inspector goes through there, gives me abbreviated report, gives gives my eyes and ears and lets me know if there's any red flag items that we're going to have to address. OK, so home inspectors are awesome. You can negotiate with them and get abbreviated reports so that you're not having those expensive full reports. They're just overkill for this moment. OK, uh, title and escrow and attorneys. So depending on which state you're in, you're going to be closing in a title or an escrow um, or title and escrow. They kind of go together sometimes and or an attorney, you know, if you're in an attorney state. OK, so these are the closers. These are your closers. These are the people that you want to network with and um, make sure that they understand your style of business. Hey, I'm an investor. I'm going to be doing wholesales. Are you comfortable with doing assignments and or double closings? If you are great, I'm going to have a couple questions as we go along, but I really appreciate and respect your support. And I will, can't wait to drive as much business down here as I can. Okay. This, these are the conversations I have with escrow and title and attorneys. Okay. Hey, I'm going to be doing this. I love, I appreciate and respect you. I need, if I need some guidance or some, some support with contracts or anything, are you comfortable with me reaching out to you? Just make sure that those lines of communication are open because those people are your biggest advocates in the game of real estate. They want to help you get closed, you know, get your transactions closed. So, um, man, I learned over the years that, that, uh, lean on your professionals. This is why your team is so critical. You lean on them. That's their role. That's how they, they really, uh, allow you to do what you're doing here by having awesome team members. Okay. Um, and then lenders. Okay. So, um, lenders are, are always, always great to have in your team, uh, or, you know, in your network. Now, why is it relevant to this topic of wholesaling when now, if you're assigning it, it's not relevant. You're, you're assigning it. There's no loan. You don't have to do anything. It's, you're just assigning that contract. Okay. So you're not paying for anything, but if you do a double close, if you get the property under contract and you close it and then close it again to sell it to somebody else, that is when you're going to need a lender. You're going to, what we call that is transactional funding. Okay. It's short term, like really short term, 24 hour funding. Okay. Um, so there are, there's lenders out there that specialize in these ultra, the very short term lending. And, um, so you can just make sure that you are, when you contact your hard money lenders, that you're talking about double close scenarios. Okay. Hey, I want to make sure that I have the funds to do a double close. They were, you know, less than 24 hour type of funding. It's, you know, a lot of the, these type of lenders, they operate in two points, one point, two points, three points costs. 
Okay, so what's a point cost is how much are you borrowing? 1% is one point. So if you're borrowing $100,000, okay, one point is 1% of that. Okay, so um, lenders oftentimes for, again, it's two points generally, but that can vary uh, depending on your price points and all that. But just for some context for you as you go through this uh, for that gap funding. Okay, again, this only applies in the double close, only applies in the double close. Um, so that is your team that you want to get really, really close with in this game of, of virtual wholesaling. Now, keep in mind, I highly recommend using utilizing tools like Zoom and um, uh, or Google Hangouts or things like this, FaceTime, where, gosh, the, the borders these days, it's like nothing. You know, with, with this level of communication, video chat and all this, man, no problemo. So I would highly recommend just being really forward action with this and, and um, build a great team, okay? So communicating with your team. Communicating with your team, your buyers, your real estate agents and home inspectors, title, escrow, attorneys, lenders, it is, it's all a really big deal. And you know the thing that I have to really just encourage everybody is that you don't need to have all the answers. Okay, I know, especially those of you that are new out here in in the game of real estate, there's a lot of pressure and anxiety and like um, just worry over, man, what if I don't know the answer? What, what do I do if I'm if I get myself in a position where I'm not sure what to do? OK, <sighs> know that you have if you've done a good job building your team, that you have team members around you that will fill in the gaps that you're not sure about, okay? Just like this was a major learning lesson for me and because I, I, at the beginning, I really felt like I needed to know all the answers or I needed to have all, you know everything figured out before I kind of got into the game of making offers and doing this. Couldn't be further from the truth. Of course, you want to be well studied. Of course, we take this very serious. All of that is true. And if you're here on this training right now, you, you're doing it. OK, um, now, but that doesn't mean that, that if there's a scenario out there that um, you need the answers for, call your real estate agent, call your title escrow, call these people because that is their role is to support you. OK, their job is to support you. I didn't realize that. I, I thought I had to do everything and, and they just, you know, they would, you know, kind of blindly do their side. And no, it's not the case. A good, a good team member, they're your advocate. They want to help you win all the time. Okay, so just keep that in mind.